the rise, the increase, the escalation of the general price level. But in the end, what does this actually mean? What are the definitions and are there different degrees of it, as well as the rate of the situation? Not only that, what are the causes and who or what will be affected by this? So for today, we will dive deep and uncover the mysteries of our topic, which is inflation. Okay, so for today, I will be discussing about the definitions of three occurrences in the economy, which are inflation, deflation, as well as stagflation. Okay, so moving on to the first one, which is regarding inflation. Inflation basically means a rise or an increase in the general price levels for certain services or goods over a given period of time or a certain period of time. It can also mean a declination of purchasing power for a certain currency. Okay, so next is regarding deflation. Deflation is the total opposite of inflation and it means a drop or a decrease in the general price levels of goods and services. And this is also accompanied by the reduction in the amount of capital or goods that are available in the economy. Okay, so for the last one is regarding stagflation. Stagflation basically means a period of low economic growth as well as high unemployment and a high rate of inflation that all happens at the same time. And in this period of time, there will also be a decrease in the gross domestic product of a certain country. As we are all clear about the definitions of inflation, let's move on to the type of inflation that is also called as various degrees of inflation. According to Kimberly Amadium, an expert on US and world economies and investing, there are four main types of inflation categorized by, by their speed which are creeping, walking, galloping and hyperinflation. Firstly, creeping inflation. This type of inflation happens when prices rise 3% a year or less. According to the Federal Reserve, when prices increase 2% or less, it benefits economic growth. This is because consumers expect rates to continue to rise under this form of moderate inflation. This increases demand. Consumers purchase now in order to save higher premiums in the future. Mild inflation fuels global growth in this way. As a result, the Federal Reserve sets a target inflation rate of 2%. Secondly, walking inflation. This occurs when the inflation rate is between 3 to 10%. That is bad for the economy and it increases economic development too quickly. People begin to buy more than they require in order to stop paying even higher rates tomorrow. As a result of the increased demand, Manufacturers are unable to keep up and more importantly, neither can wage. As a result, most households are unable to afford common goods and services. Next, next type of inflation is galloping inflation, which happens when inflation reaches 10% or more. The economy is completely destroyed. Money depreciates so quickly that earnings from businesses and employees can't keep Keep up with rising expenses and inflation. Foreign investors are shying away from the government, depriving it of much needed funds. The economy becomes unstable and politicians lose their authority. Thus, this type of inflation must be avoided at all times. Lastly, hyperinflation occurs as rates increase by more than 50% in a month. It's, it is very uncommon. In reality, the majority of hyperinflationary episodes occur as governments print money to fund wars. Germany in the 1920s, Zimbabwe in the 2000s, and Venezuela in the 2010s are examples of hyperinflation. hyperinflation. America's last bout of hyperinflation occurred during the country's civil war. Even though hyperinflation may be seen as something that rarely happens in this world, but it still has the possibility to happen. Inflation rate is a percentage change in the prices over a given time span, typically a month or a year. The percentage indicates how rapidly prices increase over time. It is also a crash factor since it is 
economic measure that help assess to the financial well-being of the, of the average person. In order to calculate inflation rate, consumer price index is essential. The data on consumer price index or CPI of every country are available at the World Bank through the website. The consumer price index is a statistic calculated by averaging the prices of a hypothetical basket of products and services purchased by consumers. Each item's price changes are recorded and then averaged. Food, transportation, lodging, clothes, recreational expenses, toys, furniture, haircut, cigarettes, and medical expenses are all examples of these products and services. For the calculation of inflation rate, first, we must subtract the past date CPI from the current date CPI and then divide your answer by the past date CPI and then multiply the result by 100. Your answer is the inflation rate as a percentage. There are two fundamental causes of inflation. Firstly, it's because of the demand pull inflation and secondly, it's because of the cost push inflation. Demand pull inflation, we know that the aggregate demand pulls rapidly faster than the aggregate supply. And this is uh, closely associated with a booming economy. These factors uh, might be because of the rising in uh, the government expenditure or increases in the consumer demands or reduction in taxes. Moreover, if an economy uh, reach uh, their full capacity, they adapt with the overwhelming demand by putting up inflationary prices. And besides that, uh, workers or an individual who receive higher wages, which can increase their spending power, uh, will make uh, the prices of goods and services increase too. This will lead to too much money chasing too few goods. Referring to the above diagram, we can see that an increase in aggregate demand or AD towards full employment YF from AD0 to AD1 shows an increase in the price level from PO to P1. Increase in AD above full employment from AD1 to AD2 increases the price level to P2. Here, real output has reached the maximum limit but prices are still increasing and illustrate that aggregate demand exceeds the aggregate supply at full employment. Secondly, the cost push inflation occurs or happens when there is a rise in the um, a cost of labor or raw materials in the economy. Since demand for the commodity has remained unchanged, uh, supply price are passes on to the consumers, uh, resulting in cost push inflation. As the cost push inflation occurs in the economy, there is an absence of excess demand and this will shift the aggregate supply curve to the left. In the diagram shown, we can see that upon the upward shift in the aggregate supply curve from ES0 to ES1, the equilibrium aggregate output falls from full employment aggregate output YF to Q1, while the general price level rises from P0 to P1. A consequent upon further rises in the aggregate supply ES curve from ES1 to ES2, causing increases in price to P2. Thus, the increase in the general price level is called the cost push inflation. The shift in the early um, diagram may come from uh, various factors. Firstly, is the wage push inflation. Uh, which push inflation occurs when uh, production workers are required to earn higher wages due to a rise in the minimum wage per worker. Consequently, uh, firms have to provide higher wages to avoid migration of the workers to other firms and to ensure there is an ongoing um, production. Profit uh, push inflation where it is an administratively set prices rather than a market determined prices in order for the firm to clear the market. Firms are assumed to add markup factors to their labor and their cost of produ production without any initial rises in the cost or demand in the economy. 
the last one is the import push indication when there's, there is a rise in the imported raw materials and the final goods. These specific uh, factors often occur due to the rise or a shift in the foreign exchange rate. Hence, this will lead to an increase in the cost of production and eventually to an increase in the general price level. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. My name is Ahmad Rifai Ben Yusuf and today I will be talking on how inflation will take its toll upon savings, production and balance of trade. Now, a continuous substantial rise in the general price level is injurious to the community's social economic interests in terms of current welfare and future economic development. Inflation affects the consumer's real disposable personal income and their expenditure pattern. This is because the money value has fallen and lesser goods can now be purchased. Now, in terms of saving, during inflation, the value of fixed deposits, bonds, life insurance policies and money would depreciate in terms of real income. Real income is the purchasing power of that money uh, as measured by the quantity of goods and services that can be purchased with it. Since inflation depreciates the value of fixed deposits, people will save less and invest more in non-financial sectors such as house and land. Now, in terms of production, during inflation, the general level of prices rise and producers would make higher profit providing that they will hold old stocks. Of course, this will ultimately lead to producers to increase their level of production. When they have increased their level of production and investment, it will ultimately create more job opportunities and reduce the unemployment rate. And now finally, in terms of the balance of trade in which during inflation, many countries face a deficit balance of trade since imports are greater than exports. This, uh, when this arises, the prices of domestic products will of course increase as this will make them uh, less attractive to foreigners thereby leading to a reduction in the demand of domestic products. At the same time, imports increase. This is because imported products are no cheaper than domestic products. That is why, uh, in terms of inflation, it is really bad uh, for savings, production and balance of trade. Now, thank you. So that concludes the end of our discussion. Now looking back at what's been discussed throughout our whole presentation, hopefully inflation never happens to us, to our country as well as our society. And we get to enjoy the commodities of the economy as it is in its perfect sense.